It is Wednesday, my dudes, and this is it. This is the big one. The single longest I have ever spent on a roller coaster in this game. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You're in for a wild ride. Literally, a wild ride, as in a wild mouse ride. A dizzyingly uh, wild, wild mouse ride, because it's a spinning wild mouse. Anyway, you get the point. This is, a, this is another multi-part video, just to give you a heads up, because I was facing over 40 minutes of footage that I couldn't really chop down to be much shorter, so... I once again had to make the executive decision to format this video the way it is. And we've begun our journey doing um, various uh, various bits of uh, miscellaneous admin work before we get to the actual, you know, main centre point of this video. Which I decided to, like, I finally wanted to do something with this awkward bit of land between the railway and the lake. I've mentioned this scrap of land uh, a few times in previous episodes and have detailed my struggles in how best to fill in said area of land, so... Hopefully you know what I'm talking about, but if not, then I guess you can kind of see what's going on screen now anyway. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm setting the scene here, and that scene is me trying to come up with a cool coaster. I was toying around with various different rides that could be placed in this area of the park. At one point I thought of a large footprint flat ride, or a car ride, or a go-kart track, or like a Eurofighter style coaster. The issue with these is that the area of land is a bit of an awkward size because it's too large for a flat ride to fit it out, to, 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 like, fill it out well. But it's too small for a good roller coaster layout, and this is what led me to the idea of putting a wild mouse coaster here. It was between this and like a side friction hop the gap style ride, but those have a slightly larger footprint, which may have gone a little bit too much for this area. So. Before getting too much further into this commentary, I'm just going to lay out the general plan for this sort of sub-series of videos documenting the construction of this ride and its surrounding area. This episode will be focused on completing the track and the custom supports, and then the next episode will be finishing off the supports, uh, creating the station, signs, transfer tracks, and the surrounding area for this sort of little zone for the park. And herein lies the reason why this is the single longest amount of time I've spent on a, on a roller coaster, because it's a pretty small layout. Um, we're going to go full, going to go full custom support um, with this thing. Uh, every single support will be created by yours truly, with zero supports being from the default auto-made options. Are my supports going to be realistic? Probably not, <laughs> but uh, I really liked how they turned out in the end. But you'll you have to see for yourself when we get there how they turned out. At this point, we're well underway with the creation of the track, and some of you may have ridden on a spinning roller coaster before and may feel that my layout is quite unrealistic in the sense that the corners and dips are all very sharp and unbanked. Uh, when you compare this ride to something like the Sonic Spinball at Alton Towers or you know, Pandemonium, which is that spinning coaster in several Six Flags North American parks, these kinds of rides almost look like regular coasters, aside from the fact that the cars spin around. However, as I noted at the very beginning of this video, this is not a... Um, conventional spinning coaster, it's a spinning wild mouse, which is not the same as a spinning coaster. The spinning wild mouse is just a regular wild mouse coaster with a spinning car. Came about in 1990s. See, I did research before I did this video. Are you guys impressed with me? <laughs> uh, came, it, was, it was born in 1997 at Dinosaur Beach Pier in Wildwood, New Jersey, and it was like a cross between a Virginia real wooden coaster, which is like now a now extinct spinning wooden coaster. And, uh, and a wild mouse, which is a very small and compact steel ride that features lots of hops and hairpin turns. I know wooden wild mouse rides do exist, but generally they're steel. Uh, wild mouse rides are good uh, for this sort of for this sort of use that I'm using it for here because um, it's very small and it doesn't take a lot of space, and they're quite cheap as well, which is why they're quite popular these days. So amusement parks can essentially boost their coast coast account stat without having to actually spend too much money or invest in much space. While the ride I'm building here features hills that are slightly steeper than most wild mouse coasters, some wild mouse rides do feature very steep drops, and even some have inversions as well. But uh, in general, this roller coaster's layout is not very reminiscent of a real-life wild mouse ride. However, some of my more astute viewers may have noticed that it does bear a somewhat uncanny resemblance to a real-life roller coaster, sort of in a way. Yes. This is my attempt at a planet coaster recreation of Roller Coaster, a Lego set currently for sale under their creator series of sets. It's a pretty expensive set, I think it's like £300 in the UK, and you know, I would never spend that much money on a Lego set. Nervously glancing over at my Millennium Falcon over there. <laughs> so I thought, hey, if I can't build this in real life, then I may as well build it in a video game. Now, the Lego version of the ride has uh, has cars that look more similar to an arrow looping coaster. Or, you know, I guess any traditional roller coaster train and in that it's just a train of some, of some like, cars in a line 
going along the track. I mean, I'm going to give you guys the benefit of the doubt and assume you know what a roller coaster train looks like, but the track itself in the Lego ride is completely flat and unbanked, so I didn't think it would work too well in Planet Coaster if we're going for kind of like a realistic park. However, as I've said before at this point, Wild Mouse Coasters also feature flat and unbanked tracks, so I thought this would be the perfect ride type to use in creating my version of the Lego Roller Coaster, and as a bonus, the actual track of the Spinning Wild Mouse ride looks quite similar to the Lego track, so it's kind of a win-win-win, really. And so that was that, and that is this, and the rest is history. <laughs> I, that's probably not how the saying goes, is it? But there we go, the main track layout is done, now we need to just do kind of the, re the rest of it, I guess. I don't have to go on to talking about custom supports and all that, but I guess we could just use the umbrella term of the rest of it, and that pretty much covers everything. The first thing we need to do, that looked kind of a bit janky, having it over the grass, because these wild mouse coasters, more often than not, well, they kind of have this look where they look like they're temporary structures, because I suppose they are. They're, they're assembled quite cheaply, so generally it's just a big big old slab of concrete, or, you know, concrete-filled area, and then uh, the whole thing sits on top of that on, like, kind of temporary looking-esque supports. I can't, I don't really know what the correct nomenclature would be for describing the look of a wild mouse coaster, but I'm hoping that my beautiful way with words, <laughs> as um, you guys can kind of understand what I'm saying here, what I should probably do with these Planet Coaster videos, maybe I should do this when I'll, I'll rewind the tape, or, you know, once once I finish doing this commentary, I'll, I'll rewind back to when I was talking about the Lego coaster and just show a picture of it rather than spend way too much time meticulously describing what it looks like and what the cars look like. I could just show a picture of it and be done. A picture says a thousand words and, you know, I don't think I said more than like three of meaning in this entire commentary. Uh, so this was kind of the more interesting part of the support structure. This is lifted from the Lego set. The way this corner is supported I thought looked quite cool. I don't think it's a particularly realistic way of doing it. I mean, it could be. I don't really know that much about <laughs> roller coasters. Like I researched, I do the bare minimum of research when it comes to talking about roller coasters or like just using anecdotal knowledge that I just happen to know anyway and then just talking off that. So I don't know if this is very realistic. Maybe Lego did research. They probably did research, but then they might have taken their own artistic liberties. But then I'm, you know, whatever, you know. <laughs> it's always a bit of a laugh that people say, Oh, when I make a roller coaster and they say, oh, it's an unrealistic layout or whatever. When I know there's a lot of roller coasters in real life where I'm like, I'll be watching the POV on YouTube and I'm like, if, if, if I made this in Planet Coaster, I would consider this unrealistic. And I know people would comment saying it's unrealistic. So I'm like, guys, let's just consider this a new wave. This is like a new generation of roller coasters. I have actually, talking about this sort of subject, actually, I have, I'm pretty much reaching the point where Neptune Park is almost finished. Like there's not much more I can do. After this ride, there are currently two roller coasters, I think, that are now constructed after this wild mouse here. Uh, one of them is a B&M invert, because I got a lot of requests for a B&M invert. And I think I did a pretty good job making a B&M invert, so I'm very happy with it. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very excited for showing you guys that. And uh, then the final coaster, I thought, you know what? I'm going to go out with a bang. I'm going to make something ridiculous and unrealistic, and it's great. It's a, um, it's like a hyper coaster. It's not the biggest. Bloodhawk is Bloodhawk and Venom are taller. This one is just ridiculous, though. Like it has inversions and all this crazy stuff. But it's it's realistic enough in its layout that it's not stupid. And I feel like an ambitious park that's quite wealthy, like some sort of Six Flags or Cedar Point or something, a park with a little bit of spare cash. Um, could conceivably approach Intamin or BNM or so and be like, yo, we want you to build this ride. This is how we're going to do it. And they can just be like, yeah, we can make that work. We can make that work. We can make that work. So that's what I'm, I'm thinking. I'm just like, let's build something unrealistic, but just realistic enough where I could believe that a park could commission this ride as like a first of its kind sort of thing. So we're going to go with that. We're going with realist, unrealistic, but realistic at the same time. And now we're getting on to the actual custom sports themselves. You know, as I mentioned earlier, like two minutes ago, was it even two minutes ago? I don't even know how, how long this commentary even is. In fact, we're about to get a break here. Let's see if it happens. Bear with me. Okay, it didn't happen. But basically, um, the support structure I'm going with, I'll elaborate what I was just on about in a second, but the support structure I'm going with here is I'm kind of trying to make this scaffoldy, janky sort of appearance. So basically just a giant steel frame and then all the little, all like the tall columns are just connected by horizontal beams that happen to intersect where the track goes, as in... I don't really know how else to do it, but the track's just supported by beams between all these towers I'm constructing. That's the general thing I went with the actual supports, rather than having like a custom supported thing. It's like just a generic, almost just like a like a giant steel skeleton was constructed and then the track was woven through it, um, is how I would imagine this. I probably should have thought about scripting that part of the video so I wouldn't just 
end up rambling <laughs> like like I so often do but you guys seem to like the rambly aspect of these videos so whatever but no I'm thinking about what to do after as I mentioned I'm thinking about what to do after Neptune Park actually before you know I just so I have this tendency to start topics and then I never finish them and this is something I'm still working on and I just said a moment ago that I'm going to elaborate on what I was talking about when I said oh let's see if it happens the main reason I suspect this is probably the main reason why the, this ride took so long not only because it is a very intricate intricate with its supports anyway so that definitely didn't help but this is the third time I built the supports for this ride the game crashed and I never save until I'm done with something so I would I lost about two to three hours worth of work twice so this <laughs> this I mean the, the saving grace with losing uh, there aren't many silver linings to losing that much amount of time but whenever I redo a ride that I lost tight, like I, the footage, the game crashed, so I lost all the footage for, so I had to redo it. It always comes out better the second time, because I think I know what I'm doing, and I kind of knew which bits I didn't like about the previous time, but couldn't really be bothered to replace it. But then after my hand was forced, I kind of ha had the option to do so. So it always comes out better when the game crashes and I lose all the footage, but it's also not great for my sanity. So there's that. So this that's probably the main reason why the game took this long. So I tried to cut the footage up because the game does autosave and it's like every 45 minutes to an hour i don't really know how it does the autosaving because it seems quite arbitrary how whenever it autosaves but i try to chop this footage up so there'll be no overlap if that makes sense like i wouldn't build something and then the game would crash and so i'd reload the save and then part of what i built in this video has now magically disappeared i tried to get it so it it was still kind of coherent if that makes sense i hope that makes sense but it, hopefully it won't matter because i did do it and everything is coherent and there's no kind of well where did that come from but there may be kind of weird moments where you see something disappear and then reappear or change without any kind of intervention from myself in the footage that's why because the game kept crashing so yeah rip my uh, sanity there but we're on the right track now and i am very 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 liberal <laughs> with save i've actually got one of my macro keys on my keyboard bound to just the save function in planet coaster just so i can quickly save very quickly without having to you know invest too much time. I mean, it's not it's not a huge time investment is it but it feels like an inconvenience having to save that quickly it's just helped a little bit like i'm so lazy like control s is just a macro key on my keyboard just hit g6 just just control s or like save as a png on photoshop i've got that down so you press it and like the algorithm it runs it's like control shift s then it hits tab twice, then presses the down arrow enough times to the point where it reaches PNG on the menu and then hits enter. But like, because it's a computer control thing, it does it in like a second. It's just, you know, it's the little conveniences, isn't it? Who was it that said this? I think it was like Bill Gates that said, you know, always hire, if you want to get work done, hire lazy people because they'll just find the easiest way of doing something. So, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty lazy person. So there we go. I'm not sure what the moral of the, what kind of message I'm trying to convey here. It's not like I try and convey any kind of message whatsoever with these videos uh, or convey anything whatsoever. But uh, that's um, something some, something kind of philosophical for you there from Bill Gates, from good old Bill, old Bill. So thanks, Bill Gates. Um, Windows 10 could really do some with some improvements though. I really like I was, Windows 10. I'm like very love hate about like, I really like Windows 10. It is my favorite Windows OS, but uh, out the box, it's terrible. I hate it. And like I have to spend whenever it updates and it resets all my changes, I have to go into the registry and edit loads of stuff, uninstall all the like Candy Crush and Xbox app and Skype that keeps re-adding and then like get Office for Windows. I own Microsoft Office. Why do you why do you exist? Sorry, that was my little Windows 10 round. But one thing about Windows 10 I don't really understand, like a criticism of it, is that everyone always talks about the updates. I'm like, oh, the updates are so annoying. I have literally never had any problems with windows 10 updates like it will tell you when it's finished updating something just update it within like the next week if you're just constantly pressing update later update later yeah i mean eventually it's gonna force the update i mean maybe i've just been lucky or i've just avoided some big thing that has affected other people or maybe in different countries the update system works differently i'm not really sure but i mean putting candy crush in an os i mean come on the thing's like 100 pounds to buy yeah i shouldn't I'm paying for the OS. I'm paying, like, can you imagine like paying for a mobile? If I paid for a mobile app for two pounds and it had apps in it, I would be livid. So paying a hundred pounds for an OS is not, you know. I think that's just that's Windows 10. I'm just looking at the footage. I'm like, I'm really having to stare because usually with these Planet Coaster videos, I'll just like close my eyes or just look at some the wall or something and just like ramble. But with this one, I'm like really staring at the screen to make sure the footage isn't overlapping, and I'm like, um. Oh, 
I'm sure, have I built this before? I think I have. And then during this thought process, I'm not saying anything. I'm like, oh, I wasn't talking. So, but don't worry, we're at 15 minutes. And I think this commentary is like 20 minutes long. The POV must be like, what, two minutes? So I've only got like three minutes left to talk. So this is a great time to plug the Twitter. If you guys want to, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, Green Harvest updates are there as well. And actually, I do have something to make, uh, say with Patreon. I didn't realize that I'd forgot to send out the Patreon message last month. I know for a fact I wrote it because I have a Word document on, on my computer saved as like Matt Lamb Patreon Mail um, September. And I, I just didn't send it out <laughs> just because I wrote it and then waited for the Patreon approval to come through. And then I remember seeing it. I was at work and I'm like, oh, I'll do that when I get home. And for some reason, I think I just thought I did send it out and now I feel really really bad so I'm working very hard on this month's Patreon mail I'm gonna make it a special one it's gonna be a much longer one and it's gonna be like a sort of behind the scenes blog of how I make films like uh, Expedition Eve and Green Harvest so I guess it's not that exciting because I've probably mentioned it in this series of videos or just in randomly in Kerbal videos but I'll hopefully succinctly summarize it and I'll post like a the first draft of like the Expedition Eve script or something or the Green Harvest script which were wildly wildly different to what the films ended up becoming so that's the Patreon thing but yes there is a link to Patreon in the description if I haven't already done a wonderful job in describing how I don't honor the reward. I mean generally I've, I do honor the rewards I think I'm hopefully hopefully there were no new donators last month you now think that i don't honor it whatever coming to the end of a uh, the custom sporting yeah we're making good pros the custom sport one of the issues just stealthily moving away from the patreon topic now one of the big issues with the custom sports in this is that the cars are very very wide like they're so wide they're ridiculously wide they're way wider than you think they're going to be so i was like building all these boxes and i was very careful to like Lit, like kind of make the put play the footage and then pause the footage at just the right moment when a car was passing through the gaps so you could really measure and then you kind of have to visualize if the car was spun in any other orientation would it still make it make it through which luckily isn't too hard because it's a round car but there is a little bit of kind of asymmetry to it but yeah that was kind of the big thing was that how like wide the car is I'll probably have to put a sign on saying, please keep your hands in the car at all times because I think a very tall person sticking their arms right out to the side could potentially uh, have something severed <laughs> if they hit the support. So I'll probably have to keep, put up some sort of sign on the lift hill saying, you know, please keep arms and legs in the vehicle at all times. I mean, legs, yeah, I'd be, I'd be impressed if you managed to get your leg knocked off <laughs> on this ride, but arms probably should put a sign up saying, keep your arms in the ride at all times. Anyway, I know I mentioned ages ago that um, I was coming up thinking of ideas to uh, for a park after Neptune Park. I'm thinking Neptune Park has been a really big project. Like, what are we on that? Episode 24? And, you know, there's going to be episode 25 is finishing off this. There's going to be at least, I'd say there's going to be at least 30 episodes. Maybe not th quite, th probably 30. Let's go with 30 as the rough estimate of how many episodes we're going to have. Whereas you look at Crimson Tower and Mirror Lake, they were like topped off at like 13 episodes. So Neptune Park is substantially bigger than those parks i'm thinking for the next one doing something a lot lot smaller scale like even smaller than mirror lake like literally just have like a small island or a little like an in like a shopping mall so it's only going to be like 10 episodes but it's much more concise i want to do like a pleasure pier like something like at the brighton pier or the pier in la i don't know what it's called pleasure pier so what's that beach called chalice beach santa monica beach long beach oh it's one of the beaches i'll remember it as soon as i finish recording this commentary but yeah uh, like a beach like that so it's like a theme park on a pier the only issue really is that planet coaster doesn't have any ocean biomes which would be ideal for doing something like that but whatever you win some you lose some don't you and in fact the dlc the new dlc was announced today to give you a sense of time scale when uh when you go back and watch this wait what am i talking about no because this goes out tomorrow so this is very relevant to you guys i, just, I had a complete mind blank i was just like it's because I'm still in the mindset of last week's episode where I was recording. I'm like, so basically this is what's happening at the moment. You can tell how far in the past we are. But now I remember that we're not actually recording this live anymore. So this is all up to date stuff. But the new DLC looks quite good. I think it comes with like maglev trains like as a transport. So it's like a more high tech version of the monorail, which looks good. A couple of new roller coasters and some like World's Fair theming. But there was no mention of an ocean biome. Ocean biome is like the one thing I really want to have this see in this game. So um, that's that. That's the end of the construction. We'll just fast forward through the lift hill. And then you can just sit back and watch the POV. I haven't got any music, um, any sound for it because I was listening to a podcast at the time. But uh, yeah, I'll just be quiet. Like I said, links on screen at the very end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and indeed the rest of your Wednesday, my dudes. And hope you enjoy next week's video and this Saturday's Kerbal video, which I don't know if it'll be Green Harvest yet. Oh no, I've talked over the whole POV. Oh well, never mind. I think about I think I might add a break run just before that final bit because it goes very, very fast there. But whatever, links on screen here. Have a good day, my dudes. And I will see you 
when I see you.